his the history and geography of Houston, Texas. Okay, let's broaden it. Instead of Houston, let's say, do you know anything about Texas? Have you seen any movies? Have you heard anything? Um, well, that's true. That is true. Then what else do you know? In movies, maybe? Anything? Galloways. Cows, you know, the fire, all that kind of stuff. It's not like that anymore. It's not like that. Now, there's a lot of cows, but that's, you know, that's neither here nor That's a good, it's a state that produces a lot of beef. That is a fact. A lot of the beef in the United States comes from Texas, and it's real good beef. It's these cows that are black and very hairy. And they're all white. They don't have any white or brown. They're just jet black, and they are very hairy. They're called Angus. And that's what we raise. And people love them and like to eat them. <laughs> I don't even like cow. It's not too good for you. But, I, you know, it's pretty good. Steak. You know, hamburgers. <laughs> um, question. Does anybody know anything about oil and oil exports and stuff like that? Please talk to me. <laughs> yes, please speak up. Please. This is an important subject, if you don't mind. Uh, please listen up, guys. Please. Okay. Uh, uh, the U.S. has uh, managed to buy uh, new uh, natural gases that uh, doesn't come all the Yes, sir, it does. And we, they have found natural gas. I thank you for the question. That is an outstanding question. You anticipated the direction that I was going to. Uh, the natural gas in the United States, a lot of it comes from Texas. But the, the thing is, not all of it comes from Texas. But it usually ends up in Texas because in Texas we have the capability to process sources of energy. So that, especially in Houston, and so it, that, that is a fact. Do you know how they've been able to discover so much natural gas? Oh. <laughs> I'm asking you. Well, satellite, mining, these are all factors. Now, there is, uh, that is absolutely correct. These are all, what, what else can you think? There's something that's very important and it relates to exactly what you're learning about. That's why I bring it up. Think about it. How can we get more natural gas out of the ground when we think we've already found it? Go ahead. Well, we do dig. But we do something else when we dig. What would we do if we're digging, 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 and we know something is in there because we have gone in and we have tested and we have found that there is natural gas, but it's not coming out in sufficient quantities to afford us drilling more and more. How do we get it out? Or how? What can we do? Yeah. We now, okay. We ultimately we kind of suck it out. Think about it. You drill the hole deep. You keep testing your body. You know you're finding natural gas. What they do is they pump water into it. Large quantities, millions of gallons of water into the ground. This is what the, has anybody heard of hydraulic fracture? Fracking? Oh, yes. oh. Yes. please, please talk to me about what uh, you know. I, I heard about it, but I heard it's using water to kind of rupture the ground so that, like, crack it so that natural gas rises up to the surface. Perfect. That is exactly correct. That is exactly correct. And what happens, and I'm just going to draw, I'm just going to draw a picture. I am not an artist, but I'm not, I'm not required. This is kind of a well. Now, they are drilling. Now, keep in mind, they're drilling for oil, and they accidentally find natural gas most of the time. 
they are not necessarily seeking natural gas. Oil, a gas is a byproduct, usually, of finding oil and pumping all this water down into the ground. Now, underwater in the United States, I mean, underground in the United States, there's already underground lakes. But there's areas where you clearly have gas locked up in the rock. And so they take drill. Now, remember, they are seeking oil. But as they drill, they'll find that there's natural gas coming out. They pump water in. And you know what it does. And what was your name, sir? Uh, Joel. Joel? Joel, thank you. I, I probably didn't pronounce your name right. I'm sorry. No, it's all right. It's all right. Huh? I'm oh, sorry, sir. I'm going to get this wrong. Uh, okay. Correct. Okay, Joel. <laughs> okay. Okay, Joel. I'm sorry, Joel. You know, I just like to make sure I get it right. Uh, anyway, as Joel said, this becomes highly pressurized. They two, and they rupture the ground, and it releases large quantities in bubbles. In bubbles like carbonated, like coke or whatever carbonated drink that you drink. And it comes up and they, they capture it and route it to big tanks. Now, in the process, they will also get oil. Let me tell you what has been happening in Texas that I would hope you think about. It. In Texas, you know about tectonic plates? Tectonic movement causes what? Okay. In the central part of the United States, there historically have not been many earthquakes. Recently, there have been an increased number of small earthquakes. They're called tremors. They don't destroy anything, but they're really, they make people very nervous because we're used to the ground being very stable in Texas. I wonder what thinking about this process and thinking about what's going on with hydraulic, and I'm going to go ahead and write it down, with hydraulic fracturing. Thinking about this, I wonder why, I wonder why there would be earthquakes developing, or maybe is there a connection? I don't know. I'm asking, what do you think? Your opinion is as important in this case as any scientist's opinion. Yes, sir. Uh, it makes the ground fall. First, uh, it used to be all solid rock, and now when it cracks, it becomes small into smaller particles. So it's, it becomes like sediment, and it will like be less stable and more sandy. That is an outstanding explanation. Do you have something to add, sir? I'm sorry, sir. I could not cut the ground. Absolutely. These are both facts. The structure is broken down into particulate matter and it causes it to sink. And guess where it sinks? Into the water that's underground. And this is the water that we drink in Texas. And it causes this water to move around. And this water, we know right here, looks a little, we're talking about underground lakes of billions of gallons. They're called aquifers. These are underground lakes that in the United States we use to drink. They generally are replenished. Here recently, they have been going dry. Two pieces of evidence. The underground lakes are drying up and we're having increased earthquakes in a place that really was a very stable tectonic system, so to speak. So that kind of implies that there may be something worth investigating. I mean, I don't know. I'm thinking that there's an investigation that should be made. And, and I'm, I'm wondering what our questions would be. If we were going to start an investigation, and we'd have to frame investigations with questions. If we were to start an investigation, I wonder what kind of questions we'd ask. How deep the cracks go? That's certainly worth investigating. Why is it giant? Why is it what, sir? Why is it giant? 
Why is it drying up? That's an outstanding second question. These are questions we can use to guide our investigation if we would. We're not going to do it today, and we're not going to really get into an investigation, but you're starting it. What's another question we could ask? I'm sorry. Uh, should we stop drilling? Should we stop drilling? That is an outstanding question, too, and that would be how, uh, the, and that would be maybe one of the beginning questions. That might be one. How would, excuse me, I just had one job. I apologize. Um, tell me, I wonder how we would set up a kind of an experiment to see if whether or not stopping drilling would affect the number of earthquakes. I wonder if we could set up a study. I'm just that, you know, I'm not asking for answers. It's just a matter of thinking. I just wonder how we could set a study up. Some sort of controlled experiment where we have a dependent and independent variables that would allow us to kind of gather some data about what, whether or not we should stop fracking, fracturing. We call it fracking, you know, that's just what the oil guys call it. And all over the United States, we call it fracking. Any, any other thoughts? I'm not going to continue on. I'm going to ask you some questions from y'all about whatever you want to talk about. But I wanted to go into this because this is important. Um, any other thoughts? Club here. Yeah, we have quite a number. Did y'all see me in here yesterday? Yeah. Mm. yeah, I had a great time. Yeah, you know, I had a great time in there. Just visiting. That's mm. all. It's outstanding. Any other comments, questions? Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. I guess I don't. I, I could continue talking, but <laughs> oh, you may tell where I'm from and all that. I'm talking about where I was born. Yeah. I was born in another state. I was born in a state that had yes. Can I ask you a question? Um, what what is the definition of a robot? Like um, how do you define if something is autonomous? Um, um that is an outstanding question. If may I throw it back to you and ask you, how would you define autonomous? Uh, when you can do it yourself, like when you can do all Okay, so if we built a robot and it did and we had programmed it to say 
move, pick a block up, move 10 feet, turn to the left 90 degrees and put the block upon the shelf. Now, and it does it after you push the button or give it some sort of signal or turn it on. Uh, is that autonomous? I think so, but you still have to program it. You still have what, sir? Program it. Uh, indeed, indeed. So, now you're kind of going towards artificial intelligence. Okay, I see. I see. Uh, so, maybe we could agree, I don't know, that maybe artificial intelligence is really the definition of our key to autonomy. Interesting, because the robot is dependent upon humans, right? Totally for everything. We haven't set a robot loose just to say, hey, go do your thing and just play it. Because they can't. What's the closest we've got to that? Because we have done that with, I think, three robots now. What's the closest we got to with that? Okay, this was built in my home state where I was born in Alabama. That's why I put this in the space camp. Anybody know the space camp in this group? Yeah, that was in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, the Mars rovers. Those are pretty much autonomous, and you know why? Because uh, they are, they know, they, they collect samples, like, and they don't need humans to be there to monitor 800% of the time. And? the signal to control it takes about four hours just to get there. So it has to know what to do in between the control signals. In between control inputs, the robot does have to, those robots, they're half the you know, And one of them is the size of a car, a small car, a Volkswagen, uh, about equivalent to a Volkswagen, like a, maybe a Fiat, like a, about the size of a Fiat. Any other comments, questions, anybody want to Say anything that would happen to us with that? I'm just standing here for a 